Yo, yeah, what's up, everyone? For some reason, I feel led to read John chapter 3. Um, I don't know why, but here we go. All right, whatever. we're just going to jump right into it. I have no idea what's going to happen. John chapter 3. Uh, this is a conversation between Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, hallelujah, and Nicodemus, one of the Pharisees. Uh, chapter 3, verse 1. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? What a hilarious thought. <laughs> I just think that's hilarious. Um, anyways, chapter, uh, uh, verse 5. Uh, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. People will take this out of context. Uh, and also just misinterpret it uh, to try and justify their position of they want to work for their salvation. They want it to be eh, something else that's not. Um, they want it to be something else on top of faith, which would be them getting baptized, which is them participating in their own uh, salvation, trying to be their own savior. Um, I mean, I had a I had a married couple actually come against me with this. <laughs> um and uh, they kept telling me, no, you have to be water baptized. And they were not even sure. I said, how do you know you're going to go? How do you know you're going to heaven? How do you know that you have eternal life? And they like, we don't know. We just, we just hope that, um, that we do enough good and that the Lord, uh, we find favor in the Lord's eyes. It's like, all right, well, obviously you're not clear in the gospel. So how are you going to be clear on anything else? Anyways, so being born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Being born of water is not being water baptized. You are born of water, which is your first birth. Your, your, your mother's water breaks and you come flying out of her. Probably not flying. You come out of her. You come out of your mother. Her water breaks. You are born of the flesh. Okay? You're born of water. If after you're born again, of the spirit, why would you be born again of the water? Does that make sense? If like, if baptism is not a, it's not a work in terms of salvation. It's an ordinance that it's celebrated. Sure. But it's a picture of our death with Christ. Baptism is a picture of our death with Christ, not our commitment to God. Okay. But that's, that's what I thought to be honest. So when I was first born again, I didn't understand what baptism was. There was just, there was this hunger for me to get baptized. I felt like when I got baptized, the final piece, like my physical body would fall off of me. Does that make sense? And I didn't understand my death with Christ, but I had this urge to go get baptized, not because it would save me, but because I felt like it was, there was something in water baptism that I wanted to understand. And it was this picture of our death with Christ. We go into the water. We're dead. We're dead. We don't come back out. We come back out as the new creation. Okay. Understanding that we have been judged. We are in the tomb and we don't come back out. The flesh, the old man, the old creation. And when we come out of the water, we recognize we are alive in Christ. By Christ alone. Christ's life within us. Okay. Um, so... It has nothing to do with water baptism in terms of salvation. Absolutely nothing. Born of water. And he, it's, even, it's funny because he even goes into verse 6 and clarifies what he's saying. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. So if you even take the first half of verse 5, it goes in line with the first half of verse 6. The first subject of verse 5 is the first subject of verse 6. Then the second subject of verse 5 is the second subject of verse 6. They go hand in hand. Except a man be born of water, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. Unless, except a man be born of water and of the spirit. So except a man be born and of the spirit, that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do you see how the first subject is this born of flesh, which is water. And the second subject, which is born of the spirit, is the second subject in verse 6, which is born of the spirit, is spirit. 
And we know that 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 45, I know I keep using this one, but for, there's something that the Lord is, I feel like he's trying to show me, or not verse 45, verse 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption inherit corruption. So, born of the flesh is flesh. The flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of heaven, which is why you are born of water and of the spirit. When you're born of the spirit, you're a brand new creation. You're a brand new man. Hallelujah. In Christ Jesus, we are complete in Christ. And that which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. We reckon the old man dead. We reckon that we, our flesh is judged and done away with. A lot of people say this and I'm going to use it as well. When you tell people, we're all sinners, we're all sinners before God. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. They're like, yes, yes, of course, I'm a sinner, I'm a sinner. Uh, but then when you say, and your righteousness is trash. <laughs> when you say, your righteousness is condemned. They're like, mm. now I'm going to disagree with you on that one because I feel like I'm pretty good. Okay, but it says that our works are like filthy rags unto the Lord. Well, but that's probably not talking about me because my works are not filthy rags. They're like, they're pretty good. They're pretty good. No, no. Our flesh, all the bad is condemned. Our righteousness is condemned because we have no righteousness of ourselves. We do not want to be found trying to obey the law and earning our own righteousness. We want to be found in Christ, not having mine own righteousness, but the righteousness which is by faith, which is the righteousness of God by faith in Jesus Christ. That is uh, Philippians chapter 3, verse 9, I think, around there, like like 8 to 11, 9 to, 9 to 10, I don't know, whatever. If you tell someone, hey, look, you're a sinner, and they're like, yes, I'm a sinner, I know, and then you're like, hey, your righteousness is condemned, stop it. They're like, mm -ha -ha, no, you're a heretic, and you preach a false, false gospel, and you just want to be lazy, and you want a license to sin, and you're using God's grace to do whatever you want. You just love your sin, and you want to live life your way and just go to heaven. All right, so that's what my little pharisaical dude sounds like, apparently. No, it's because their righteousness is being... is is being shown to them as filthy rags and, and they can't handle it. Um, the cross is an offense to them and they cannot recognize their, they cannot recognize that their death with Christ, one, they probably can't recognize their death with Christ at all, that all of them, bad and good, is judged completely. Not partially judged and then, and then you bring your own part. No, it's all judged. It's all bad. It all ain't worth diddly squat. Diddly squat. The only thing we want is Jesus Christ. We want the righteousness of God, which is by faith. In the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So let's continue on, yeah? Jesus answered, verily, verse 5 and 6 again, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, which the flesh cannot inherit heavenly things. Do you see that? So the natural man cannot in inherit things of the spiritual man. It cannot understand things of the spiritual man. The natural man cannot inherit heavenly things. Now, the natural man cannot inherit our heavenly eternal inheritance if it be the natural man only, if it's only the flesh. Because flesh and corruption, flesh and blood will not inherit the kingdom of God. Corruption cannot inherit incorruptibility. Christ, everything in Christ, the heavens, it is incorruptible. We have it reserved for us in heaven an inheritance undefiled. That fadeth not away, reserved for us in heaven. We have been born again into an incorruptible seed. This is First Peter, um, like chapter or First Peter chapter one, I think, like verse twenty three or something around there. It's the it's the first chapter, I believe. I'm forgive me that I don't have it. Oh, hey, wow, hallelujah! Turn to First Peter. Um, fat fingers can't turn pages. We all know that. I keep saying it. Um, First Peter chapter one verse. Three and four. We'll start. We'll go there. Blessed be the God of our Father, hallelujah, of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope. The flesh is dead. We need to be gotten, we need to be born again unto a lively hope, unto life. Born of the flesh, born of water, and of the spirit. The flesh cannot inherit the, thing, the things of the kingdom of heaven uh, because it's corruption, and the corruption cannot inherit incorruptibility. Again, uh, 
has begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Verse 4, to an inheritance incorruptible. And 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 50, uh, the last half of it, neither doth corruption inherit in corruption. Our flesh is corrupt. It's, it's corrupted. God has judged it. It's done away with. We cannot inherit heavenly things. We cannot inherit incorruptibility. We cannot inherit eternal life in our flesh trying to do our own thing. We inherit it by this, by being born again unto a lively hope into the incorruptible seed, which is verse 23, being born again, a first Peter chapter one, excuse me, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, the Lord Jesus Christ, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Hallelujah. So, um, to an, uh, verse four again of chapter one, verse, uh, of Peter chapter one, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that fadeth not away reserved for you in heaven who are kept. We are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. So again, this being born of water and of the spirit, our corruptible flesh cannot inherit incorruptibility. We have to have the blood of Jesus Christ. We have to have the righteousness of God. We have to be born again. And to be born again, a man must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and his death, his burial, and his resurrection. Hallelujah. So let's continue. Verse 7 of John chapter three. I know I keep flipping around, pardon me. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh. And whither it goeth, so is every one that, born, that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, how can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, we speak that we do know and testify that we have seen and ye receive not our witness. 